This is the air spring. We call it air spring. Easy, difficult. Easy, difficult. It is not that difficult and I've got some nice tools to show you how our suspension forks and the forks on your or suspension on your cars and motorbikes really work. Uh, welcome you all to Sig Biker Studio. Um, I've already made some super simple uh, video about how this works, how one leg and the other leg can, can, can play the role uh, in the suspension. But today I've got some very interesting stuff from RST. I've got RST first. This is the air suspension fork. Uh, I'm going to put this one on my green froggy and make a test for you. So this one will be tested. After that I'm going to do the maintenance of it. And then I also have the RST Omega. This is the spring fork. This is the air fork and this is the spring fork. Uh, I'm only going to do uh, the full overhaul uh, of this one. So this one won't be tested. But very interesting thing is this. This part here that's the inside of the fork on the right side and this one here on the left side. This clear plastic tube, that's our upper leg or stanchion. So this is, it's this one. And the one here is on the left side. What the fork should do for us is to absorb the bump or the energy uh, that it will that that we would get otherwise when hitting the bump when we ride the bike uh, Then the suspension the fork will work. It will it will like this uh, the, the lowers will go up uh, sliding on the on the upper uh, stanchions and then the fork will not let the energy to come out in the in the way which would make our um, bicycle, motorbike or car behave in a very, very bad way. How does it work? Let's talk about the suspension. So this is the left side and that's the, that's the way they do it on most of the fork on the market. Suspension on the left side and the rebound damping on the right side. Okay, let's, let me show you from, let me show you closer. Okay, this is the close up of our suspension. This is the air spring. We call it air spring. Don't look at this spring uh, just, just yet. Uh, just focus on this, the, the air chamber we've got here. Uh, on the spring fork like this uh, RST Omega, this whole thing would be filled with the spring, like coil. When we hit the bump, what happens is that the suspension will work. So the lower legs will go up the upper legs will go down and we still have the handlebars in our hands. We can still maneuver the bike. So this is when we hit something. Now, the problem is that if we only had this suspension uh, spring, air spring or coil spring, what would happen after, hi after hitting the bump would be this. See? So it absorbs the energy, but we don't want to let the fork to uh, or let the energy to go out in a way we won't be able to uh, to control. That's why we have the other side on our fork, the rebound. This is the right side of the fork. It will smoothly work with the left side while we uh, uh, absorb the bump, absorb the energy on the spring. This one goes down as well. But then, in order not to let the energy just catapult our bike upwards, then we have this oil here uh, and some, some seals, some piston here and some small holes in those and the oil goes through. This damping will not let the oil go through those canals, small canals uh, too fast. So if we actually turn our rebound on, I'm going to turn it out fully, you're going to see what happens. Um, the, the fork goes down, but it doesn't come back very easily. You can see that? Easy, difficult. Easy, difficult. This is the rebound. Okay, uh, I'm going to even show you how the oil reacts here. All right, this is it. This is it. Can you see how it, how it works? 
Okay, so by using this knob here, we can actually regulate how hard it will be for the oil to go uh, through this little, through the system of the holes. Let's go it like that, okay? This is our damper. So, when our suspension absorbs the bump or the energy, it won't let it go that quickly. That means we've got a traction and comfort. If you've seen some cars uh, on the road, which, with, which the wheels, which will just uh, go and, you know, bump around, that means the rebound is broken. It will still have the suspension, so the spring can, can work, flex, but the rebound is broken and you have to replace uh, the, uh, the suspension on the, on the car. So this is the rebound, but then those manufacturers said, since we already have this system and it's pretty clever, let's make also the compression adjustment. And it's down here. So this is the upper side of our right side of the fork. This is the, uh, the lower side. And here you can see, here we've got the compression. This is how it works. You can also regulate that one in a similar way. We have the knob here. What it makes, um, it will make the compression very easy or harder or super hard. See, when it's fully open, I can push this one easily. When it's like fully closed or it's maximum uh, compression, then it's impossible for me to go all the way down. So we have the rebound. So rebound and the suspension are the, the basic things that we have on our forks. But then the compression will also support our spring. Whether it's a coil spring or the air spring, it will, sub it, it will, have, it will be the additional support of it. Uh, that means if you, if you don't want to go uh, through, the, through your travel too easily, too deep to your travel very easily, you will uh, adjust the, uh, the damping here, okay? It's same principle here, let me show you that, okay? This is the rebound, let's lock it and see what's happening to the oil here. Uh, difficult, difficult, difficult. Now I've opened this one and it, it goes smoother. Now I've talked to some riders who said that if you use the compression, that means you don't have um, the right sack or the, the pressure in the uh, air chamber. So some riders would not really use the compression. I don't use it that much. And actually on my forks, I don't have the compression adjustment. Uh, but um, it's also good to know that the, the basic regulation or adjustment of your fork is uh, regulating the air pressure in the chamber. So we've got a simple shredder valve here on this side and we pump it. The more air we've got here, the more pressure we have. Uh, the heavier the rider, more pressure you need. And also, uh, if you want your fork to be very stiff, uh, not to, not to uh, mm, uh, not go too deep in your travel too easily. You put a little bit more of um, of uh, the the air here in, into the chamber. That means you're gonna have more or less sag, and sag means how deep your fork will dive when you simply sit on your bike uh, with just in your in your uh, normal riding position. Okay, and there's also something called progression, like progression. For example, uh, if I want to push uh, my fork uh, for the, like the first two centimeters, let's say, I can just push it with one finger here. But the, the, the more I go, let's say it's now like three centimeters, it's much more, I need to use much more force in order to uh, still squeeze it for another uh, 60 millimeters. That's the progression. So the deeper we go, the more pressure we've got here because this is the air and that, that means progression. If there was a coil spring like on this one, on this fork, it would be much more linear. So we could go, we, we would use pretty much same force 
from uh, going from like 10 millimeters to 20 millimeters and then from 70 millimeters to 80 millimeters. Uh, it's not the case uh, with the with the air. There's also a thing called positive chamber and negative chamber. It, I think there would be a point of actually discussing it uh, in the times in the past when we had like dual, dual air fork uh, on the rock shots and you would have to pump the negative and the positive chamber separately but now all the forks I think. All the forks? Am I right? I think so. Uh, when you just pump the fork, it pumps both chambers, you don't have to think about it. Uh, it also, the negative and positive will have impact on the progression on your fork. Another thing is that uh, if you are bottoming out, bottoming out is, means that you, you are too, too easily using your whole travel. Uh, that's why the forks will have some additional spring or some kind of a elastomer rubber, let's call it like that thing so that when you really bottom out uh, it will save your handlebars from breaking or the fork from breaking, the wheel from breaking. Uh, and if you want to have still same sack but don't want to go too deep into the travel too easily, uh, you, you want to have less air, so like smaller chamber. Uh, for RockShox for example you use so-called bottomless tokens uh, let's say if we put this one, this is piece of a plastic, if we put this one here that means we've got less air. If we take these two together and put those inside, if we've got even less uh, air in the, in the chamber that means it will be, we change the progression once more uh, and it will be much more difficult to go deep in, in your travel. So. I think I, I've, I've talked about it in the e easy way. There is also a thing called rebound to lockout. That's something I have on my green froggy on the money too. I'm gonna show you how it works. All right, so this little thing uh, is on the right leg on my money to marker fork. And this is the lockout. I'm gonna uh, open and lock, open and lock. What you see here, you can see that I'm opening this little canal or hole here or I'm closing it. So now the oil will go through, oh, it's difficult to have it, okay. The oil will go through and now it won't, that means uh, the, the fork will be stiff, locked out. And that is called hydraulic lockout. We can also have mechanical lockout where two mechanical things things will just be against each other and won't let the, the fork go. Uh, when we open it, they will, they, will, they will allow the fork to work. This is how it works basically. Very easy and very smart. Two basic things we need uh, our fork to do is to first absorb the bump. So we, we've got the suspension and then dissipate the energy and so we've got the rebound. Additional thing is the compression, but it's still based on those pistons with the small holes and an adjustment and the oil inside. This is really a smart thing and that's how it works. If you have any further questions, let me know. If you would like to add something to, to what I've just said, uh, feel free to do so. Thank you guys. We've got a Nationals XCO in two weeks. I'm gonna be preparing for that. Uh, testing for you the RST first on my green froggy. See you guys. Bye bye. Ah. <sighs> guys, thanks for hanging out with me. Remember to join our forum.sigbiker.com where we discuss all the topics, uh, training, service, any issues with the bikes. If you want to share anything with us, join our Facebook group. All the links are below. And if you want to join my patrons, feel free to do so. And now, okay, you might watch just one or two episodes more, but then let's go and ride. <laughs>